Hey folks, just a quick editor's note here. I was having some technical difficulties, so no music this time, and I will have the entire JM report as follows. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back, everyone. This is the JM report. I am your host, good old JM. This is episode two, post WrestleMania 34, and uh, it was quite a show, and it was full of surprises. It was full of twists and a couple of uh, head scratchers. But uh, nonetheless, it definitely left a lasting impression. And I got to be honest, it, it was a very good show overall, despite some of the questionable outcomes. But that's what the uh, post-Raw shows and SmackDown shows are, are for, as WWE considers them the beginning of the new season into the following WrestleMania, which, by the way, will be at MetLife Stadium for WrestleMania 35. So if you haven't already made plans in the tri-state area up north, you might want to start now considering how the crazy weather has been as of late up there. But let's get right into it. The results and rundown of WrestleMania, including the uh, kickoff show, which even then had uh, at least one head scratcher, but we'll get into it. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal kicked off, well, the kickoff show. And uh, as much as it was full of uh, previous winners, uh, you know, not including Cesaro because uh, he was involved with a match later on. Surprisingly, to many, I, now, now, not, not much to me considering and hoping where the current storyline with him goes, but Woken Matt Hardy would win the fifth annual Battle Royal with a little help of Bray or from Bray Wyatt. We haven't seen Bray Wyatt since the uh, ultimate deletion and from the, Maddie Carp, uh, from the Matt Hardy camp, uh, compound. Good Lord, I can't speak English today. So, uh, Bray Wyatt, not seen since then. Uh, Jeff Hardy was also last seen there, m- m- making a, a brief cameo as Brother Nero. And what does this mean? Uh, are, are these now the new Woken Warriors of Bray and, and Matt Hardy moving forward? And... Again, it wasn't much of a surprise. It was just a matter of when this was going to happen. Many figured or assumed that Bray Wyatt would have a slight difference in appearance, whether it's it's, it's a ring attire or maybe a, a trimmed a, a trimmed beard or <clears throat> a bit of a haircut. But no, he's he's exactly the same as he was with the Wyatt family, and that's his look. And I'm uh, I'm digging it. I think a little little bit of uh, yin and yang, if you will. Even though Bray currently is a, a babyface, but uh, he still would look like a heel on any other day. But of course, mixing that in with uh, uh, Woken Matt Hardy, I think it's uh, I think it's good chemistry there. Let's see how far this goes. I'm quite curious to see whether or not Brother Nero would uh, would, would mix in later on. But for now, the focus is on Matt and Bray. Next up, we had uh, Alexandra, excuse me, uh, Cedric Alexandra going one-on-one with Mustafa Ali for the vacant Cruiserweight Championship as they participated in the finals. Um, this match was pretty good. Um, I still understand why it could not have been on the main card. This is two straight years that the uh, Cruiserweight Championship has been regulated to the kickoff show, and um, I, I just don't understand that. I understand why there's no faith in these guys, why, why put so much time and effort pushing for the uh, 205 Live show and at times on, on NXT for these cruiserweights, uh, you, you notice they haven't been on Raw at all as of late for their you know cruiserweight uh, segments. Not not that they wouldn't put them on, it's just they don't have it anymore. I, I guess they're pushing other storylines that they feel are more important. But uh, I, I don't get it. But that still didn't take away from the match itself. I, I thought it was um, very good for, for what it was. Uh, it definitely would have stolen the show had it been on the main card, I believe. Uh, next to others that I'll get into in a while. But uh, at the end, it was Cedric Alexander who walked away. I was hoping it would have been Mustafa Ali, but, you know, they were both baby faces. Uh, it was kind of difficult to, to decide, but I guess the uh, the chosen one, if you will, was uh, Alexandria, who is now the new Cruiserweight champion and appears to be in quite a few with a bunch of people, including uh, uh, not, not Mustafa Ali, he's still his buddy, but uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Blake Murphy. Later on in the week with uh, 205 Live with, with uh, Vinicia or places a position as the next uh, challenger possibly for 
uh, Cedric Alexander's first title defense. Then uh, we had the quote-unquote first ever women's battle royal. As you remember, I mentioned last time that this is not the first women's battle royal out of WrestleMania. Uh, once again, they're they're pretty much uh, insulting the audience's memory. You you guys just had a, a, a women's battle royal back at WrestleMania 25, even though it wasn't called that. It was called uh, the what the the Miss the Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal, something like that for. To crown, a, to crown a Miss WrestleMania. And because I guess that one being won by Santino Morella in drag wouldn't uh, wouldn't be, uh, uh, well, it wouldn't fit today's uh, uh, revelations, if you will. So in that case, I can understand that. But, but still, it, it's in history. It, it's in your network to, to blatantly uh, insult the, the audience's uh, intelligence that... Uh, there was a previous one, but this one you call the first one ever, even though there was one prior to this. But anyway, uh, to my surprise, there were more NXT female uh, talent than I thought it would be. Um, uh, Sari uh, Sane was uh, was one of them, and uh, many felt that they were just filling in spots. Like, well, I mean, they, they did more than that. They got a WrestleMania moment, if you will, and... There were a couple of us uh, single women beatdowns. I think Carmella was one of them. She just got beaten down for showing off her briefcase and just got tossed to the side. And then it was like taking turns who 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 gets uh, who gets the gang beat down and then they get thrown out and finally they scramble and they they, they remember that's every woman for themselves. But in the end, it came down to Sasha Banks and uh, Bailey, and uh, this feud apparently is going to keep on going. Uh, and all of this is in doubt because of what we're going to discuss a little bit later. And uh, Bailey was uh, sidestep Sasha and caused caused her to be eliminated, and we all thought Bailey won. And kudos for this because I I didn't see it. Uh, I'm sure none of you didn't as well the first time around. That Naomi was thrown through the ropes, not over the top, but it must have been in the background or they purposely didn't show the the replay as as it will fit into the to the ending here. So everyone thought uh, Bailey wins, but the bell didn't ring, and and that's what that, that was my first. Uh, I guess my first flag to go up, like, wait a minute, why isn't the bell ringing? Is there a new surprise entry going about, about to walk down the aisle, something like that? But no, you see Naomi rolling back in the ring, standing there in the middle, telling Bailey, I'm right here, I wasn't thrown out, and they scuffle a little bit, and then uh, Naomi throws out Bailey, and she wins the, uh, well, she wins the, the Women's Battle Royal Trophy, and <laughs> I'm not getting back into what that trophy is supposed to represent or what it looks like, but... Kudos to Naomi, and this will hopefully, if common sense, yeah, what's that? In WWE, what's that? Hopefully that will mean that, that you get back into the title run and at least, at least have one more run with the championship for a little while because uh, I think both the uh, women's divisions on Raw and SmackDown need to be uh, uplifted uh, quite a bit. But again, we'll get into that in a little while. Then the main card, starting off with uh, the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship, uh, Seth, Seth Rollins, The Miz, and Finn Balor. No demon paint for Finn Balor, interesting, interestingly enough. But he did so. He, he did sport his uh, his new gear. Um, I, I think uh, what's it called, a Balor Club for all or for everyone, basically showing support and um, appreciation to the, uh, the the gay and lesbian community, uh, wearing his uh, traditional black attire, but it, it was uh, outfitted with uh, with the rainbow colored flag. Uh, as trimmed around his uh, boots and knee pads. And he came out with, uh, I believe, I, I, I don't remember the name of the group, but uh, they they were representatives of the um, the gay and lesbian community. And they were, they walked uh, Finn Bell up, at least up on stage. And uh, they mysteriously disappeared in the smoke that was used for Bell's uh, entrance. But uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad that they're still showing support for other communities out there, uh, they being WWE. Uh, Seth Rollins kind of, uh, I, I don't watch the show, but I, I think, uh, I heard it was based on uh, game of Thrones, a character. And you see Seth Rollins, uh, coming up with these bright blue, uh, con blue contact lenses and, uh, this, uh, this armored looking outfit. Uh, I'm, I apologize. I just, I, I don't have HBO. <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch game of Thrones. Not that, not that I don't like it. I just haven't watched it. Uh, the, there's too, too many seasons in for me to catch up with. Eventually, I binge watch it, uh, maybe over the summer. And of course, the Miz with his Miz Taraj, 
who he told to uh, stay in the back from the top of the stage. And I'll give him that at least normally. Um, yeah, he, he was talking about no excuses. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you guys another chance to challenge me for the title, but um, I don't want to hear any excuses. So keeping that in mind, he sent back his uh, Miss Taraj and there were nowhere to be found for the rest of the show. Great match, uh, by the way. And at, at the end, it took uh, Seth Rollins to defeat uh, Finn Balor and The Miz. And he's the new Intercontinental Champion. We all thought, including myself, I, I think I mentioned it last episode, that The Miz would take some time off uh, to be with his newborn baby. But uh, no, he showed up the next night on Raw. And he's, he's still doing... Um, public appearances but I, I believe he's not doing live events so i think he's, he's spending that extra time at home with his new baby and, and wife marie so again congratulations to the new new mother and father smackdown women's championship saw charlotte flair defend against oscar it was uh empress versus queen and am i the only one that, that feel that the wwe are, are running out of uh, nicknames for all these women you got the queen the princess the empress the 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 <laughs> The boss. I mean, I mean, as short, short numbered uh, women's division as it is now, they're going to eventually run out of uh, nicknames for all the women that are coming in later. I mean, it's just uh, you know, like tone it down a bit. Like everyone has a freaking nickname, and it's and there's so many left in the dictionary. There's only only so much left in the vocabulary that you can use or trademark both, and then uh, and then what? Uh, Three to five years from now, when a new, a brand new, homegrown talent comes around, and you, you're trying to figure out a nickname for the person, and you can't come up with one because someone else used it previously. Yeah, sure, you got Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and now you got Rowdy Ronda Rousey, but they're generations apart. You know, even before he passed away, um, Piper gave his blessings to Ronda to use the Rowdy name, and also not, not not only generations apart, but in a whole different sport. So. How long before they realized, well, we're going to turn it down with the nicknames. But, anywho. Very competitive match. Uh, I thought it showed a lot of uh, uh, story here. Uh, pretty much Asuka. Uh, I always felt that Asuka was tweaking or at least hinting a bit of a heel, uh, a heel run in, in this whole storyline when she finally made up her mind which championship she wanted to go after after the Rumble, uh, Royal Rumble. And... Charlotte being the you know the one that needs to prove you know I, I'm t to beat the woman you gotta beat the woman, and she's the uh, she's basically the one sitting on top of the women's division right now, and it again it, it was a great story. Asuka was uh, pulling all the stops and Charlotte has some some uh, counter for every move she had and at the end it took one figure four eight or, or figure eight lock what do you call it. <laughs> uh, the figure eight and and uh throughout the match oscar was working on charlotte's arm um eventually to put on the oscar lock or the cross face chicken wing and and, and never got to it and it just took the one one attempt one one uh, opportunity for the figure eight and to everyone's shock and surprise oscar tapped out and felt the effects of our first loss ever in wwe and it was to Charlotte Flair retaining the SmackDown Women's title. Great show of class at the end. Oscar getting the microphone, saying that Charlotte was ready for Oscar. Uh, well, I guess at least the, the booking community did. <laughs> at least Vince did. And it's it, it's apparent uh, next time they go back to New Orleans and there's a uh, streak on the line. Yeah, it's going to end. Stop going back to New Orleans, uh, WrestleMania at the Superdome. That's where all streaks go to die. Fatal four-way match for the United States Championship. Jinder Mahal, Randy Orton, Rusev, and Bobby Roode. Uh, of course, uh, Rusev was uh, a last-minute addition from the previous week. Stories uh, going from him being not happy with the company, that he may or may not leave. And in, in order to uh, satisfy him, they, they threw him into the Fatal four-way basically at the last minute. And there may or may not be heat here, uh, this, that's one story that I'll get to as well. And, of course, from this point on, raise more questions about Rusev's uh, position in WWE in general. But the, the, the match itself wasn't all that great. Um, everyone basically hit their spots. 
Everyone got, got a chance to be in the ring one-on-one with someone else. And, of course, everyone else was tossed out to the ring. And Jinder Mahal would defeat uh, ev- um, all three men, Orton, Rude, and and Rusev, but, uh, as Rusev took the fall after a nice colossus And one, two, three, and Jinder Mahal is now your new United States champion. He will go on to defend uh, the title at uh, Backlash. With where that kicks off the uh, both Raw and SmackDown sharing pay per views from now on, and he, here's one of the like like, like the previous matches a questionable outcome like wait what, uh, Rusev Day was is a hit it's a big thing why not give him a title as a as a reward of sorts nope Vince McMahon thought otherwise, and Jinder Mahal's the man for now. The mixed tag team match with uh, Kurt Angle Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie. Great entrance by uh, the faces here. Of course, Triple H always has to have one of those entrances and basically have the most expensive ones as well. They had a, a laser show of sorts. They had a, these, uh, these uh, I think they're called tricycles as well, but the motorcycles, uh, motor tricycles, if you will. And it looked like to be a female, an all-female uh, motorcycle uh, club. Uh, I, I couldn't catch the name of who they were. But they escorted Stephanie and Triple H to the ring. Uh, each each one had their own uh, cycle to run down. And, of course, all the posing. And when it came time to Triple H to stand on the apron to do his traditional and signature uh, water spit, yeah, Stephanie didn't rehearse that too too many times, as you can tell. But Kurt Angle had a great entrance. Ronda Rousey, once again, um, sh- showing love and support and paying homage to the late Roddy Piper coming out in her own kilt. Coming out, uh, they mentioned again with uh, Roddy Piper's uh, leather jacket. Uh, I could be wrong, but it looked a little smaller than her than it did back at the Royal Rumble. But that's just me. Maybe it's a replica. Uh, who knows? But uh, yeah, Ronda looked great. She had definitely put the naysayers to to sleep here and performed very well. My only nitpick, and I'm sure not the only one, that every time there was an attempted armbar from from Ronda, Stephanie immediately countered it. Like she had that much experience in MMA. I'm not saying Stephanie doesn't train as much as the husband does, but it was just way too convenient every single time. They, they could have tried to, uh, I guess, in a way, hide that by having maybe Stephanie too close to the ropes or uh, Ronda not realizing that she's uh, too close to Stephanie's corner and she could tag out to Triple H. Or, you know, just something. Uh, just every single time, Stephanie would just clamp her hands and prevent the, the eventual... Uh, on bar that ended the match by via submission and uh with with that in with that being pointed out I, I think that's what prolonged the match longer than it needed to be but n- nonetheless it was still very entertaining and again Ronda performed very well Kurt Angle did his part and when it came between him and Triple H that you know they they they, they performed their part really well <clears throat> and uh yeah so far one down I guess Ronda Rousey's one and oh at not only WrestleMania, but so far her career in WWE. And it was great to see Dana White uh, at ringside uh, showing support as well. It was just a, uh, just a quick uh, uh, shot of Dana standing up and applauding, had a big smile on his face. And uh, that was it. That was it for Ronda and, and Dana, who at the time, uh, Dana's still dealing with the, with the, uh, the unfortunate uh, incident from Con- Conor McGregor from the week before. And of course, Ronda now seeing where she'll move on. Like, who, who will next her? Who will be her next opponent after Stephanie? The Bludgeon Brothers, the Usos, and the New Day in a triple threat match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This uh, this was all right. Uh, the outcome, uh, I, I kind of expected it because it, it kind of opens up uh, the floodgates a little bit in the tag team division, at least on SmackDown. We got this the, this new revived uh, Wyatt family into the uh, Bludgeon Brothers, and they, they, they try to push them as these huge monsters that they're unstoppable, and well, they they are, and it was only a matter of time for they before they got their hands on the tag titles, and they sure did here at Mania, defeating the Usos and the New Day in a bit of a short match, I believe. But uh, again. <laughs> All these matches are timed, as I mentioned last uh, my last episode, including entrances, so everything needed to be to a certain point. And uh, I believe this match suffered from that because uh, 
of the promos and the commercials and the reminders of what's coming up. And it's just, it's just way too much, but to each his own. And the new tag team champions are the Bludgeon Brothers. John Cena, for weeks leading up to Mania, has been calling out and taunting The Undertaker. Will he show? Will he accept the challenge? Well, somebody decided to uh, step in for a bit and perform a, a, a perform a concert, if you will, of that being Elias, who answered the, well, not the challenge, but answered the call because he, <laughs> he found an opportunity to walk out to the ring and uh, do a little solo act there. Everyone was fooled when the lights turned down and all oh, you heard were the, were, were the guitar, uh, guitar strings instead. And, of course, uh, this led Cena to go back into the audience where he was sitting for up to this point in the crowd because he was going to be there as a fan, like, oh, he's, he's staying true to this world. Like, but every single match they cut away to Cena. And and even and, and I thought it took away a little bit at the ending of the Charlotte-Oscar uh, match where where Oscar was left uh, left in the ring uh, after Charlotte walks away, kind of like to you know give her the give her the center stage for as you will, but no, it cuts away to Cena where a referee ran down the aisle, says something to Cena that he's here, he's here, and then all all eyes on Cena running up the ramp, and Oscar was just never seen again. This the the the, the producing and directing of the show um, wasn't too good either, and and this this segment showed it. But anyway. Along his, uh, uh, during his performance, you know, what's his name? Elias, uh, of course, ends up insulting Cena. Cena runs back into the ring, gives him an F, uh, well, uh, an AA, excuse me, an AA, and was done basically and leaves the ring, walks up about halfway up the ramp, and then the lights go out again. And this time the, it, it was a real deal. The Undertaker does come out, he walks down the aisle. Uh, they did a bit of a tease where they showed his uh, his ring gear from last year, uh, folded in the ring, his hat on top, and uh, okay, that'll be great. You, the lights go out again, and maybe he'll tra uh, teleport back into the ring. But no, they the lights go back out again. The the, the music plays, and he, here comes the Undertaker walking down the aisle, and of course Cena try to try to put on his you know scared out of my pants look on his face, but it was more like a deer in headlights, and it was a squash match. But just under three minutes, it was a squash match. Whether it's to hide Undertaker's um, lack of performance because of his, uh, you know, physical health, if he has any. I mean, he, the man did have a hip hip uh, replacement surgery. He did have, um, I believe, uh, knee surgery as well. And uh, many of us, many of us have seen him on his Instagrams and his, uh, I believe, his wife's uh, uh, Twitter account as well how he's been working up. But that's one thing. To be in the rings is a cold, different genre there. And I think they were trying to hide um, any any possible, well, well, to say weakness is really harsh, but to to basically hide the fact that Taker can't go again like he used to with the two Shawn Michaels matches, uh, maybe even the Batista match that was very physical. Hell, even the uh, Triple H match in the Hell in a Cell. And... Yeah, he's he. If he hasn't already, he's definitely wind down. Not to mention his last two performances at a at a WrestleMania weren't the best with Lesnar and Roman Reigns, and it wasn't his fault. I think they were just asking too much of him, and now they realize that they gotta hide those um hide those uh. Well, again, I don't want to say weaknesses, but you know he the man cannot go after a certain time, and the match this match was only three minutes long, a complete squash match. Seen uh, the only defensive move Cena got in was a back suplex. To go for his five knuckle shuffle and you no know, take a sat right up, choke slam, tombstone later one two three and it was all over. So Taker basically uh, gets uh, recognition, not, not recognition, redemption. Taker gets redemption at, at the place where he first felt uh, his WrestleMania defeat at the hands of Brock Lesnar back at WrestleMania 30, and apparently he's not done. Taker that is, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Next up, another uh, highly anticipated match that was almost thrown at the last minute, probably like a week or so, be it prior. Originally, it was going to be Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, and then uh, that was scrapped because they got fired, and, and now Shane was uh, attacked in the back. He, re he made his return, and of course, Daniel Bryan was medically cleared to return to the ring, so it makes sense to make a tag match. And had if uh, Owens and Zayn win, 
they get the they get the jobs back on SmackDown Live. If they lose, they they remain terminated. So well, well I'm not sure if they had a concern or maybe some doubts of um, Daniel Bryan, his first match back in the high stake profile uh, events such as, such as WrestleMania, that maybe the goosebumps was would be too much, maybe the the pressure, but. Who knows? Because <laughs> uh, after Shane and Daniel made their entrances, uh, uh, Owens and Zayn jumped up from behind and kept uh, Daniel Bryan out of the match for nearly 10 minutes. And Shane had to carry the match all by himself the whole time. And then finally, when Daniel refused to go to leave the, the ringside area by a stretcher, he stands up, gets back on the apron, and waits for the hot tag. And the place goes nuts. Daniel Bryan performs all of his signature moves. He gets everyone in the yes kicks. He, he, he gets them in the drop, uh, the corner drop kicks, and finally uh, was able to get uh, Sami Zayn to tap out to the to the yes lock, and uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn continued unem unemployed, as Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon are victorious. Ugh, catching my breath here, folks, because <laughs> still dealing with my medical stuff. Next up, we had Nia Jax uh, against Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. This was definitely one of the matches that needed to end the way it did. A uh, bit of a, a bit of another squash, but uh, Alexa Bliss did get her her, her defense in there, We're especially working on Nia's eye and working on the, the left leg. But at the end, uh, Nia's size and strength was too much to overcome, and doing a Samoan drop off the second rope, flattening poor little Alexa, and Nia Jax is now your new Women's Raw champion, and it's about time. Even when she was a heel, I felt that she could have had at least at least one short run before all the NXT call-ups happened uh, last year. But uh, at least finally now that someone realized, you know, let's put it on Nia. Let's see what she can do with the title and move forward from there. Then we have the alleged uh, dream match in WWE. Um, even for a place, say, WrestleMania or Wrestle Kingdom, that's the place where you expect the talent to just go all out and, you know, just give it their all and just perform to a level that no one can expect them to do ever again, or at least maybe once a year and just take it from a level 10 and to a level 50 if all possible. And by that, I mean, there were a lot of high expectations on this match. Um, I did recently watch the, the match between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura from New Japan for their, for their Intercontinental Championship and and the rematch, matter of fact. Both matches were, trem were tremendously amazing. Uh, the first one, was I, I thought, was a, was a five-star match. The second one, about four and a half. But, you know, you, you sometimes got to try to out, you know, outstage yourselves at times. And with the added pressure of this being the, the fantasy or dream match and the high expectations, this match was... was Okay, it was not bad. Somewhere in there, at least I feel. I know others thought, thought it was great, but to be honest, as if they were they were hesitant to pull, you know, triggers, if you will, you know, metaphorically speaking. But um, and for for what it was, you know, it was still entertaining. Uh, honestly, I expected a little bit more, with uh, at least a little bit more high flying, but definitely more in a in the uh, technical aspects of of a wrestling match. But at the end, uh, AJ Styles re re retained his uh, championship over Shinsuke Nakamura as Shinsuke was going for a Kinshasa from one corner to the other. Styles was able to counter, and i never seen this counter before. He basically catches his leg, rolls backwards with it, and, and able to put um, Nakamura in the, in the Styles class position, hits him with it, and gets a three count. I thought that was an amazing counter to, to a pretty good match. And AJ Styles is still your WWE champion. And, of course, the surprise ending here was not only Nakamura not win a title, but a heel turn. As he, <laughs> as Nakamura gets down on one knee, grabs the belt from the, refer from the referee to hand over back to Styles. And as soon as he does, he gives him a low blow and kicks him around to the outside of the ring, hits him with a Kinshasa there, and walks away to nothing but booze. So Shinsuke Nakamura is now a new heel on SmackDown. Braun Strowman and Question Mark will take on uh, Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team Championships. 
everyone's expecting Samoa Joe or Drew McIntyre, you know, all these names that haven't been seen in a while or maybe a brand new face that's never been signed with WWE before. So speaking of uh, high expectations, this was just as high as well. Who was Strowman's tag team partner going to be? So uh, Strowman gets on the microphone and basically says, it's going to be one of you guys, uh, uh, someone from the audience. And what does he do? He walks around from one side of the audience to the other, and he points out to, to someone. He's like, you, I'll pick you. And strangely, he walks all the way around uh, and reaches out for this young young little boy. And then you know, takes him by the hand and walks all the way around back through the, through the audience, through the, through the time timeskeeper area, and uh, gets in the rings. Like, you know, you just stand in the corner and let me do all the work. And his name was Nicholas. Who is Nicholas? <laughs> well, we wouldn't know until much, much later. Uh, matter of fact, by, by that night, we will find out Nicholas is uh, the son of WWE referee John Cone. And for those who don't know who John Cone is, if you remember the match between Braun Strowman and Big Show and the ring collapsed, he was the referee in that match where it looked like the ring actually ate John Cone. <laughs> so Nicholas was Braun Strowman's tag team partner. There was a moment where Brian was beaten down and had to go for a tag to get out. He tags in Nicholas. He comes into the ring. He's scared out of his mind. There's no contact made, so he quickly tags out again. And Strowman just squashes uh, uh, Sheamus and Cesaro, and they win the tag team titles. <laughs> I thought there was a rib. I mean, the fans were into it, and I, I can understand why. But, again, it was just one of those, I felt, middle fingers from Vince to the audience to, that were expecting something else, especially the how they divide the fans from you know the universe to the uh, to the internet fans who, who think they know better and this and that. I, I thought it was an insult, but it was entertaining. Kind of makes uh, some of us uh, from my, you know at my age can kind of think, well, how come they couldn't do this more often? Maybe all of us could have been pit, uh, chosen at one point to be a, a tag team partner of someone, maybe of King Kong Bundy or or Bruno San Martino, or Hulk Hogan, who knows from back in the day. But it is what it is. And main event time saw Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against Roman Reigns. The fans hated this one uh, for many reasons. Uh, of course, being should not have been the main event. They thought when news broke last week of uh, Dana White mentioning that Lesnar was returning to UFC, like, well, then he's got to drop the strap. So after what seemed to be like a million F5s, uh, Reigns will not stay down. There was even one through a table. He will not stay down. And Lesnar got to a point where he took the gloves off and did what he did what he did to Randy Orton uh, back at SummerSlam where he uh, busted him open hard way with the edges of his elbow. And Roman Reigns bled like a stuffed pig. And it was all over his face, his hair, the, the, the ring mat. And Reigns tried to do a comeback with a Superman punch and a spear. It wasn't enough. Lesnar would catch him on a second spear attempt from Raymond, uh, from Roman Reigns. Catches him up in the F5 and delivers it one last time and gets the three count. And to everyone's surprise, Brock Lesnar is still the Universal Champion. So what does this mean? Well, turns out that Lesnar signed a, a new deal the day of WrestleMania, according to Dave Meltzer. And that the next night on Raw was supposed to be his uh, his last night, whether he was uh, going to be champion or not, to drop the title or say goodbye or whatever he was going to do. But, um, yeah, Lesnar signed a new deal. Uh, it was drawn out uh, the week before during uh, or, or before the uh, the go-home show to Raw. And Lesnar didn't sign to the day of WrestleMania. And... There was a press, a press release issued by WWE, I guess, to put away all the naysayers and all the rumors. But this also still means that Lesnar has a contract with UFC. Now, I believe he's still writing out his suspension for Musada, and he would have to get back into their, uh, you know, testing pool eventually if he wants to fight again. Uh, Dana White mentioned possibly Lesnar facing the winner between Stipe Miocic and uh, Daniel Cormier. But uh, no official word yet, but that's the idea they're going with. And Lesnar would have to be cleared in so many ways medically and uh, 
drug testing cleared, all that stuff. He, he needs to be clean. And uh, I, I challenge anyone to take a look at Lesnar's physique from UFC 200 and compare it to today. Um, I want to say that uh, whatever he was allegedly using, um, he's not doing it anymore. And it's a change in his physique. Uh, he's definitely a little bit bulkier, but not, not in the sense where he's toned, if that makes sense. You know, he, he doesn't have that thick bodybuilding look anymore. He's just really, really thick in, 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 in a lot of areas, his, his shoulders, his neck, his traps. Well, this is not a science project here, so let's move on. So, once again, let, let's not surprise everyone by winning the championship, uh, well, no, retaining the championship, and it's still with WWE. His next title defense it was announced as well at at the Greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia, where he'll defend in a steel cage match against Roman Reigns in a rematch from WrestleMania. Maybe he drops the belt. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Lesnar has such a such a wide variety of um, you know basically getting what he wants, and among other things, he got raised somehow. Uh, that number hasn't been released, but it was also interesting to hear all this because allegedly there was an altercation as soon as Lesnar got backstage into the gorilla position he got into the, uh, into a shouting match with Vince McMahon and another alleged story about that is Shane McMahon physically had to separate Lesnar from his father after he uh, threw the championship belt towards Vince or by the wall near to Vince where he was sitting and he still resigns anyway the next day he, he was still resign which is more than just amazing but it's very interesting so as of right now, Lesnar still with WWE, still with UFC simultaneously. The man's making money. And how and how can anyone uh, ref, uh, refute that or question that? Anyone from making money? And, well, then you got bigger problems than I think of, pal. Uh, one side note here from WrestleMania, many of you may have noticed that uh, Alicia Fox was not in the Women's Battle Royal. And that's because of, uh, well, it, it's on video, so it's not alleged, but allegedly it was the reason why she was kept off. And that being she got into an altercation with Travis Brown. That's the husband of Ronda Rousey. Uh, it looked like it was some kind of a hotel lobby, uh, un unclear of the location, but it's a brief video. It, it's up on YouTube, but it's up on um, The Sun, who actually recorded it. And uh, you see uh, Fox pointing a finger at Travis, saying that he's rude and causing a scene. Travis very calmly saying that he's not doing anything. And then some uh, uh, identified lady walks over to Alicia Fox and tries to have a walk away and tell her that there's a camera right there. So Alicia turns to the camera and reaches out and tries to take it away. And then the feed cuts. Now the speculation that Alicia might have been intoxicated or whatever the deal is. Now, maybe, maybe it'll work, but may, probably not because the decision was made on, later on that night that Alicia was not be, would not be involved with the Battle Royal, and she hasn't been seen since. So hopefully uh, it wasn't that serious of an incident and all things have been cleared, and we can see Alicia eventually come back to the WWE. Uh, speaking of incidents, uh, there was one also during uh, WrestleCon where Harry Smith... The son of the late uh, Davy Boy Smith, British Bulldog, he and he uh, in, he confronted Jake Roberts. Now, according to uh, Nick Hausman of WrestleZone, Roberts refused to apologize to him for the, for many disparaging and insulting remarks he made about his father in various podcast appearances. When Harry went to confront Roberts at his WrestleCon table about it, Roberts refused and declined to to conversate with him. Once Roberts did that, uh, Harry then asked uh, Roberts to step outside to settle their issues with a fight. At that point, Roberts began to swear and told Harry to F off. Harry, Harry allegedly threw a cup of hot coffee towards Jake the Snake. And uh, Harry also claims that Roberts' daughter then tried to fight him and says that Jake and his daughter were acting inappropriate and wanted to start a scene. Harry also claims that he offered him, uh, allegedly, offered him drugs back in 2012's uh, WrestleCon. And that was another issue he had problems with, uh, with Roberts about. So it's unfortunate here. Um, this, this news uh, broke uh, late Monday and hasn't been an updated story since. So it's just unfortunate to see um, these two 
basically uh, legendary families of wrestling, the, the Roberts. I know that's not his real name, but, you know, Jake Roberts and the Smith family be at the different ends of the spectrum here. And unfortunately, Davy Boy Smith is not here to defend himself. But how and why? I, I, I didn't listen to these alleged podcasts that um, Jake Roberts has been on and insulting Davy Boy. I know everyone had a lot to say about Davy Boy towards the end of his career, especially the Ultimate Warrior when he was still with us. But, uh, I mean, if it makes a good show, I, uh, you know, I understand you, you're you trying to get not only a good show, but trying to tell a great story to go with that show. But um, you got to also keep in mind, there's a good chance that someone's listening as a relative and they, they won't take too kindly, especially if the story's been cleared up, but you're still chipping away. You know, don't, don't be Nancy Grace on podcasts. Don't do that, people. Alberto de Rio, or Alberto El Potron, depending how you want to call him, has been fired by new uh, by Impact Wrestling. He missed the uh, Lucha Underground versus Impact uh, uh, TV show taping. Uh, I don't think it has been scheduled for a TV appearance, but it was streaming online the day of uh, last Sunday. And Alberto was, was supposed to be a part of the main event, and he no-showed. And there was no communications for about a day or so, and no one knew anything about um, the whereabouts of Alberto. So Impact went went uh, went on to go ahead and terminate him from his contract with Impact. However, Alberto uh, El Patron would would uh, set the record straight and go on to uh, Sports Illustrated and uh, make it, make the the airways clear where he had a family issue that that needed to be attended. And that uh, he felt that that was more important than just uh, attending a wrestling show on, uh, on a Sunday night. So it doesn't change much, unfortunately, because he's still terminated. And who knows where he's going to go. Many feel that he's, he's trying to get out of the pro wrestling business altogether. He still has his MMA company down in Mexico. Many uh, feel that uh, this is the last straw with Impact and uh, Alberto. There was that rumor a few months ago that Alberto was trying to get back in, in the good graces of WWE and maybe rekindle that fire, but who knows? And it's unfortunate, again, I thought Alberto, Alberto De Rio is a great talent. Uh, he's just been involved with a lot of situations the past couple of years, whether it's his fault or just happens to be at the wrong place, wrong time kind of thing. Uh, again, uh, that's just how the, the the business works, whether it's directly responsible or related to whatever issues you're involved with. Uh, many remember the incident with uh, Alberto and Paige when they were still dating in the Orlando International Airport, and how long that took that how, how long that took to clear up, and no one faced any jail time, thankfully. But I hope um, eventually Alberto lands on his feet on whatever it is he wants to end up doing, whether back to MMA or being an owner an owner of an MMA company or just call it quits altogether and retire from pro wrestling but um, we'll have to wait and see uh, and my best guess is that he's still still dealing with this family matter and and it's just uh, pr preventing him from making any further comments obviously it's personal he doesn't want to get into it and hopefully we'll hear something from him real soon uh, I guess congratulations are in order for the WWE Network as they surpassed uh, 2 million subscribers uh, this past week. Uh, probably because of all the hype around WrestleMania, so kudos. Um, I, I wonder if some uh, if a portion of these 2 million subscribers are just there for the free trial and cancel later on. But um, we'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can have a different number for you guys next week. Triple H announced the return of the United Kingdom Championship Tournament and subtitling it The King of the Ring. And it'll be, uh, it'll be held at the Royal Albert Hall. And as you remember, that, that place is famously known for that battle royal that that was won by the British Bulldog back in, uh, what was it, 91, I believe? 1991. And I was misled that uh, where, uh, among many participants, that the Undertaker and Andre the Giant were part of that battle royal, and they they weren't, unless it was a, a different battle royal that wasn't taped or or made to air on, on television. But there's, there's yet to be any footage of any kind that I'm aware of of Andre the Giant and the Undertaker in the ring at the same time. And for a long time, I thought that 
this would have been the place for it, but it wasn't, so a bit of disappointing there. But nonetheless, uh, the UK tournament returns, and it will have, among others, uh, NXT talent participating, uh, also along with um, the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole defending the tag titles and his newly won uh, North American Championships at the show. And this tournament will last two days, just like the previous one. And interesting to see here, uh, uh, as of now, um, Pete Dunne hasn't been announced for a title match or whether or not he'll face the, the winner of the tournament. But, uh, yeah, it's coming up in June. I got that. Yes, June. <laughs> June of this year, a couple of months away. And be, be, to, to see, oh, excuse me. We'll see um, which other talents from the UK that haven't been seen yet on WWE Network or NXT. They got their working relationship out there with uh, Melly, uh, with, Melly. <laughs> with with many um, promotions out there, um, including uh, ICW. So be uh, be it will be entertaining for sure. I know the last year's was re was very entertaining. Uh, if, if we can get someone else other than Michael Cole to call the matches, I think it'll be even better. It's my opinion. And uh, this all leads to, uh, well, quite quite a number of no, a number of stories that happened all in the span of two days after WrestleMania. Of course, I mentioned uh, Lesnar's uh, contract resigning with dual uh, contracts with UFC and WWE. And what <laughs> the ups and downs of that, of that situation. Uh, so this leads now to the post-Mania shows of SmackDown and Raw. Many returning faces, many debuts to the main roster, and in no particular order, Ember Moon, No Way Jose, Jeff Hardy returned, Bobby Lashley, after 10 years, returned to the WWE, the, the Authors of Pain debuted on Raw, and interesting, uh, this, I'm sure this will be answered tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow night, this Monday night on Raw, because I'm, I'm recording this on a Saturday, uh, you know, <laughs> Saturday the 14th. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure this will be answered or why the Authors of Pain basically abandoned Paul Ellering after they, they won their debut match, defeating Rhino and, and Heath Slater. They just leaving the ring. Paul Ellering's right behind them. And then you see um, Akum and Rezar just basically put their hands on, their sh on his shoulder and say, no, you're staying here and walk away. How? Why? Well, many speculating this, uh, this is... Um, Basically, the, the, the write-off portion of Ellering where he doesn't need to travel as much with the main roster as he did with the NXT group where they mainly focused or staged um, in, in the Orlando area, although they'll have live events around the country. But uh, um, from what I've read, too, not too many uh, locations that Paul Ellering traveled to with the Authors of Pain. It was just a tag team and no, no Ellering. So... I can understand that. I mean, the man's a Hall of Famer. The man has put his time into the business. Does he need to travel as much as the main roster does? Probably not. But if, if he's an agent, then, you know, it's kind of like a double standard. You know, you travel with the talent as much as you would if you were a performer or an agent. But uh, again, we'll see what they come up with as far as the reason why Arthur Sapain abandoned uh, Paul Allering. Among other returns or, or debuts, Samoa Joe returned back to Raw and challenged Roman Reigns after the match with uh, Lesnar uh, from the Greatest Royal Rumble. And this was the uh, <laughs> this was the bit uh, the up and down of the week. I feel well. Let's go with the down part first. It was it was speculated. It was rumored for a long time, and then it was finally confirmed on Raw. And Paige announced her retirement from in-ring competition due to neck injury, only 25 years old. And she retired where she won her first ever WWE Women's Championship. Back then it was called the Divas title. And, uh, you know, this, this, it was quite sad to see her point out all, all some of her accolades and r tried really hard not to break down the chance of this is your house, the chance of thank you, Paige. And um, mentioned Daniel Bryan in her speech that uh, when he was medically, medically cleared to return, that, that gave Paige hope. And I hope it does, that Paige is extremely too young to retire. And 
had to, uh, as she mentioned, had to find something to do now, you know, and she she would have to step away to figure that out and eventually come back and let us know what that'll be. Little did we know that will take only about 24 hours because the opening of SmackDown had Shane McMahon announced that since Daniel Bryan basically was reactivated in the main roster, that he can no longer perform both duties as a general manager and a, and an active competitor. So they needed a new general manager. And who would that be? Paige herself. And a completely 180 here, going from crying and sobbing, you know, leaving her, leaving her, 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 her trademark T-shirt back in the ring. And here she comes basically in... Well, uh, a, a ripped pants suit. <laughs> you know, it, it's a style, folks. That that that, that bit of, uh, I guess, Euro- European uh, punk style. And you know, I dig it. You know, I, I enjoy. It. I got no complaints. Here. It was just funny that um, uh, someone in a general manager position can go to work with ripped jeans. But <laughs> it is what it is. And she made the announcement of uh, Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles and first ever meeting in WWE on SmackDown, which was a great match, by the way. And among other returns here, we saw Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Now, they weren't called the, uh, the iconic duos that, that may be due to copyright issues with another company that had that name already. So now they're just called the Iconics with two eyes in the beginning. And they attacked uh, Charlotte Flair. They beat her down, and then as... Yeah, the new Iconics were leaving up the ramp. Here comes Carmella. And why did it take the referee longer than it needed to to realize that she was trying to cash in? And it took like two or three times. So it was Mike Kyoto. Like, are you sure? He, then he'll walk towards the, the ring announcer. Go then, But goes back to Carmella. Like, are you sure? And Carmella's screaming ahead of like the rest of us uh, in, the, in attendance and at home. Because I'm like, come on, already. she's trying to cash in. And sure enough, uh, Carmella gets the, the three count, and Carmella is now your new SmackDown Women's Champion, defeating Charlotte after a beatdown. Well, doesn't that raise a few eyebrows and uh, make people scratch their heads? You know, it, um, I, I thought it would have made a little bit more sense had she done this at WrestleMania, but considering everything else that was going on and... The uh, I guess the the blending in with the John Cena segment and Oscar, you know, broken down and realizing that she lost her first match and this and that. So, all right, no makes sense to do it some some other time somewhere else. And once uh, once again, out of uh, Sports Illustrated, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this name and I apologize, but Sports Illustrated's Jimmy uh, Chavina. Uh, had had two small stories going on here. Claims that Rusev is still in the contract with WWE and will still be a part of the actual greatest Royal Rumble match. And also Rey Mysterio is expected to return by this time, but nothing has been finalized as terms are still ongoing. So Mysterio, Rey Mysterio that is, may or may not appear at the greatest Royal Rumble at, at what capacity, no one knows yet. But as far as the Rusev story, this was what um what I was refer- excuse me what I was referring to earlier. That Rusev um well first he he changed his Twitter handler, and has no mentions or references to WWE. Um, then earlier this week, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier this week after the match was announced, that was going to be Rusev and the Undertaker in a casket match at the Greatest Royal Rumble. The next day, Rusev was um, spotted by TMC Sports. Whether well, He was in character the entire time Rusev was. Um, he was with Lana. Lana was in and out of character. But the entire time, Rusev was basically saying that, oh, this this, this is it for the Undertaker. He's going down. You know, he, he may be one of the greatest, but uh, he's done. He's, he, he, he won't see the end of this match. You know, stuff like that. It's online, so you can check it out for yourself. Again, he was, he, he was in character the entire time. He put over Rusev Day. And then also on Rusev Day, the Undertaker will be in the casket. And many feel that comments were unjust and that, among other reasons, of, un- of being unhappy with the company, pulled them out of that match and was re- was replaced by Chris Jericho. And that will be Jericho one-on-one with the Undertaker in the casket match. So th- th- definitely a lot of questions. Neither one, n- neither one of these stories relating to Rusev make any sense, to be honest. If the man's unhappy, I'm sure they'll do whatever it takes to keep him on board. 
and move forward as best as possible, whether if, if it's a raise or changing his position. But including all this I'm mentioning, including the WrestleMania results, including the, the debuts and returns on Raw and SmackDown, all of this leads to the superstar shakeup next week on Raw and SmackDown. Who's going where? How is this going to work? Is, uh, is, is anyone really too excited about this? I mean, the last time I did this last year, all they really did was switch rosters. At least the, you know, the, the top people, the, the top 10 or 12 uh, talent rosters on each show, they just switched them around. And okay, so their stories will continue on a different show. And I, I, I didn't see what was so intriguing or exciting about that. Uh, it was just a waste of time. And calling it a superstar shakeup, like, well, it's not what it is. <laughs> They trying to be sports entertainment. Well, they, you can't call it a draft either. So all this in the mind of one Vince McMahon who, and uh, I hope with the upcoming return of the XFL and during the time that he takes to have that one season of football that he doesn't have as much influence with WWE, at least not with live events, Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views and have uh, maybe Triple H step in to take over until Vince comes, returns come, or comes back after the, the XFL season is finished. Assuming there'll be a, a follow-up season the following year, you know, 2021, but, you know, one thing at a time. But uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, there are a lot of head scratches, a lot of um, questionable outcomes here. Not, not to a point where, People are up in arms and wanted to storm WWE headquarters in Connecticut and just kick the door down with pitchforks and <laughs> torches. But it makes you wonder if all this if all this is going to have a payoff eventually, and, and I hope so because the roster is stacked. And I even told myself like, wow, with all these returns, with all these debuts. It's kind of make me, you know, it's kind of gonna make me want to get the next WWE 2K game, because, you know, it, it, me personally, in, in a long time video game uh, or wrestling video game uh, fan, it doesn't always cut it when you know that say you, you have a Bobby Lashley on your roster on your, in, on your video game roster, but you know it's a it's a creative wrestler, <laughs> so I, I'd rather have the, the the legit character, um, that was already a part of the game without having to download them from the you know downloadable community or whatever it's called at least in playstation so yeah they they got to find a way to balance out all these uh talents and uh for the better um they're going to realize it's maybe too large and maybe uh, relegate some people to stay uh on nxt or maybe just have them up here on superstars the weekly show that apparently is still going I, I lost track of that show I don't even know if it's still on the air. Well, maybe, I, I hope they don't do this, but maybe um, they're, they're thinking about making SmackDown two hours long, and I don't think that would be a good idea. I mean, money-wise, it's a great idea, but it's just too much, way, way too much, personally. And I, and I know I'm not alone. I'm, I know I'm not the only one. But uh, it is what it is. So we have the upcoming... Uh, greatest Royal Rumble, 50 superstars, not only from WWE, but also local um, talent from Saudi Arabia, maybe from others around the world. Um, they have not announced all the participants other than a couple of matches. As I mentioned Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns in a steel cage for the Universal title. Chris Jericho will now face The Undertaker in a casket match. And I believe they only mentioned about 10 names to be to be part of the Royal Rumble match itself. And as the, the day gets closer, I'm sure they'll mention more names, but it, it's not going to be the full list. They, they haven't done a full list of Royal Rumbles in quite some time when you know either they don't have enough, someone's going to pull double duty, or they're just going to have a surprise entrant like like they've been doing the past few years. Not as many, I, I believe, this year, but you know they're trying, but I'll give them that. So with that said, folks, a bit of a short episode this week as not much has happened. I think all eyes and all focus will be on this superstar shakeup this Monday and Tuesday nights on Raw and SmackDown. Who's going where? 
will, will there be more debuts? Will, will there be more returns? Um, for their sake, uh, I kind of hope so. And find a way to balance all this out because it's just way too many roster members right now. And they got to figure that out. But for one thing, definitely focus on the tag team divisions and the women's division. If they have uh, their own championships on each show for each division, then you got to have just enough uh, uh, participants uh, to, to stretch out from one year into another, to have credible challengers, credible opponents. And, and even if you make your champion uh, last one year, like Brock Lesnar, for example, and you have no feel or faith in the in the next next big thing, for lack of a better term, then just make sure you have a backup plan. For example, the Authors of Pain are now in the main roster. If they end up on SmackDown, they'll, they'll definitely pose a threat towards uh, the, the Bludgeon Brothers, if you think about it. But I really thought that would be the direction they'll go. Um, I, I probably feel there'll be uh, another handful of uh, NXT superstars called up, and we'll just have to wait and see. And... I don't know if they'll do the overnight uh, roster call-ups like, like they have been doing where you got to follow them on WWE.com and see who else has been called up overnight. But uh, we'll see. But until then, just want to thank everyone for listening. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what you hear, and I know I sound like I, I've been running a marathon, but again, that, that's that got to do with my, my current medical ish, uh, condition, which I'm sure one day... I'll explain for those who don't, who are not aware, but one day I'll come on here and and break it down for you guys. But uh, for now, uh, I realize it's a short episode, but again, not much going on. All eyes and ears on the sh- on the shakeup coming up, and looking forward for the uh, the backlash lineup as well. And I know a few matches have been announced, but I'm waiting for the full card to be announced, and I'll bring my predictions then. And of course the. Uh, Greatest Royal Rumble's upcoming. And uh, what else we got going on? Oh, well, that's about it, really. Um, I just went through my notes here, and I mentioned everything that I that I wanted to mention here. So, once again, thanks for sh- uh, thanks for uh, listening in. If, if you like what you hear, click the like button, comment, leave any questions. I'll be sure to read them here, read them here on air, and share my thoughts about it. And um, until next time, go to 